Welcome to episode 482 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger at sellingyourscreenplay.com. Today I'm interviewing filmmaker John Swab, who just directed a cool film written by and starring Scott Kahn called One Day as a Lion. It's a crime thriller feature film. We talk about this film and how it all came together for him. He's a great He's got a great cast in this film. In addition to Scott Kahn, the film stars J.K. Simmons, Virginia Madsen, and Frank Grillo. John was on the podcast before in episode 371 for his film Body Brokers. We talked about that film and his how he got his start in the business. So definitely check out that episode. It's number 371 if you haven't already checked it out. But today we're going to be talking about this latest film, One Day as a Lion. So stay tuned for that interview. SYS's six-figure screenplay contest is open for submissions. Just go to www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash contest. Our regular deadline is May 31st, so if your script is ready, definitely submit now to save some money. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found on my blog and the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast, and then just look for episode 482. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. Teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. Teach you how to write a professional logline and query letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So now let's get into the main segment. Today I'm interviewing filmmaker John Swab. Here is the interview. Welcome, John, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me back, man. So we chatted over a year ago on the podcast about your film, Body Brokers, um, and how you got broke into the business. So I'm going to refer people listening to that episode. It's number 371 if you want to kind of get a little bit more about your origin story and kind of get up to date. Um, but today we're going to dig into your latest film, One Day as a Lion. You really put together a great cast for this film, Frank Grill, J.K. Simmons, Virginia Madsen, and of course, Scott Kahn, who wrote the screenplay. Um, so maybe to start out, you can just give us a quick pitch or log line. What is this film all about? Uh, Jackie Powers, uh, played by Scott Kahn, takes a job with a local washed up hitman to uh, get some money together to get his son out of juvenile detention. And the job goes bad and, you know, shit, it's the fan. Mm -hmm. So how did you get involved with this, this project and and what state was the screenplay in when you, when you came on board? Uh, Yeah. So Scott's agent um, reached out to Jeremy, who is my manager and producer. And uh, you know, he was interested in maybe Jeremy producing the movie. Um, Jeremy took a look at the script. He liked it. He talked to Scott. He liked Scott and somewhere in their conversations, my name came up and um, I took a look at the script, read it, enjoyed it got along with scott as well and uh we kind of were off to the races from there but you know the script was about 130 pages or 125 pages when i got it um you know the shooting script ended up being about 95 so we we shaved off about 25 26 pages Mm -hmm. um and uh yeah so you know i got in there and here we are Perfect. And so maybe we can talk about that development a little bit, just as a, as a director and also as a director, who's also done a lot of writing. Um, and obviously Scott is going to be playing the lead. So it's a real synergistic relationship. Um, just how did you go through that? Were there, maybe you can talk about some of the things that you needed to change. It sounds like a lot of cutting, but were there some story things that you thought needed to be changed and how do you broach those with Scott? Yeah. I mean, you know, for me, I've learned the best, uh, the best way forward is, is straight ahead and, you know, being just up front and cutting to the chase. And when I read the script, uh, I love the story, you know, I love the, the comedy and the, the lightheartedness to the story. Um, you know, I felt like there were times where, you know, we were deviating from that by, uh, taking unnecessarily roads and side roads and avenues with characters. Um, and so my, my goal was just to further refine what Scott had done and distill it down to its most purest and simplest form. And so, you know, having directed, 
um, scripts that I've written, uh, you know, and you do that enough and, and you're able to be objective with your own material. So when it comes to somebody else's, you're able to be extremely objective. And, um, you know, my goal was just to make Scott's script the best it could be. And, and, uh, and he was receptive to that and we worked mm-hmm. to get it there and, uh, happy with where it ended up. And I'm just, I wonder if you can talk about this just as a relationship with a writer, you know, how do you, again, as a writer yourself, um, what do you recommend to writers when they're working with a director? I mean, this is a little bit of sort of the opposite problem. I think most writers are going to encounter where they already had a project going and you sort of came on board. I think with most writers, you know, they bring their project and they're the producer and the director are sort of maybe, um, you know, upstream as opposed to downstream just, but how do you deal with that? How do you deal with doing, giving notes, um, not necessarily rocking the boat. Um, do, is that not your approach? I mean, it sounds like just a straightforward approach. And if they don't, if they don't like my ideas, maybe you're not a good fit for it, but is there some sort of, you know, middle ground that you find with this and just in dealing with people and approaching people with, with things that may be, I think, I don't think, um, any one situation is the same, you know, mm-hmm. for giving notes. Um, you kind of got to read the room and understand who you're dealing with and when you're dealing with them in the, in, in, you know, also uh, being uh, somebody who's written my own screenplays and shared them with people, um, I understand how vulnerable that is to share something with somebody. And, you know, I've I've gotten criticism that didn't feel constructive. Um, and, you know, it can it can be jarring and it can be uh, something that's that's not helpful. Mm-hmm. So whenever I give a note or I'm, I'm approaching somebody with a change. I never do it with any malice or anything, but trying to get to the best version of whatever we're working on. So, you know, I may have a note um, or an idea or a thought that I'm not sure of, and I may mention it. And if, and if like, you know, in my, with me, if I can't defend a point in my script, then it probably shouldn't, I probably should change it. You know, mm-hmm. if I can't defend it and and convince the person that I'm talking to, then it, then it might need to be looked at. And so, you know, when I'm approaching somebody like Scott, um, you know, it's it's all out of the idea of collaborating and and getting the best out of what he's brought into me in this mm-hmm. script. So, uh, you know, but but there's no one size fits all approach to giving notes to anybody in my yeah, experience. Yeah. Yeah. And so as Jeremy, it sounds like he, it's being your manager and also producing partner, um, obviously you have a close relationship with him. Um, what does he have to pitch for you? Like, what are some of the highlights in your career? And I ask this just, you know, so other writers, other directors can maybe have those same, same things. When your name does come up in these types of conversations, what does Jeremy have? Do you have a reel, a director's reel? Do you have some specific films? What does he do to, to sort of pitch you to these other folks? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think again, every situation is different. I mean, one of Jeremy's uh greatest strengths is that he, you know, can can read a situation and understand what it needs. Um, you know, in terms of uh, with a pitch. So, you know, if if Scott's talking about, you know, one day as a lion for instance, and the genre being kind of a little bit of an action set in a western town, um, and having similar themes to, let's say, in our, our uh, in, in terms of my films, Ida Red. So Jeremy used that as something to reference and something to pitch to him to watch, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to to referencing Body Brokers, which has no elements of One Day is a Lion in it. So, gotcha. you know, I think it's identifying something that's like, whatever the situation it is, identifying something that's relevant as a reference point. And, uh, you know, luckily we have a pretty broad spectrum of projects. So, you know, uh, you know, we can, he can refer somebody to look at, you know, something that's, that's very specific to whatever the pitch is. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned also this script was 125 pages. When you first came on board, you got it down to whatever 95 pages. Um, I I run into that a lot, running, selling your screenplay, running a screenplay contest. I see these scripts that are extremely long, 120, 30, 40 pages. Um, Do you have any tips for, for writers? How can they cut their material down? How can they go through something that they think is so precious at 120 pages and get that down to 90 pages? Yeah. I mean, you know, I I've, the thing I've gotten, I pride myself in now is self-editing. And, and, you know, I, when I'm writing, you know, however long of a process that might be, uh, no matter what I do before I write that day, I wake up and I read the script from beginning to wherever I'm at, you know, and as I'm reading, I'm editing. And 
you know, I'm never adding. I'm usually, you know, I usually on my first pass, I put every as much in and I fill it to the brim. And then on my subsequent, you know, read throughs, I keep refining and refining and refining. So, I mean, in my experience, less is more, um, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's, it's better to, you know, treat the audience as if they're smarter than you think they are than dumber than you think they are. You know, Mm -hmm. audiences like to feel smart. They don't want to feel browbeaten. So, um, I think always err on the side of less, uh, because you can always put more in later, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And how much of these types of things where you're cutting a script like this down, how much come from the practical side of things, just the production side of things? Listen, we don't have the budget for 120 pages, but we do have the budget for a 95 pages. How much comes that way versus how much comes the creative? And how do you find that balance, um, between, you know, the practical considerations versus the creative considerations? Um, yeah, that's a good question. And and it, it's, it's each scene or note is different for different reasons. One might be purely creative. One might be totally budget. I mean, for instance, in this script, there was like a seven or eight page car chase along a cliffside, you know, where the car is on two wheels and like mm-hmm. about to go over the cliff and people are, you know, screeching tires and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, one on one side that's created, there's no cliffs in Oklahoma. So we're not going to be, you know, having a car chase along the side of a cliff. Also, we don't have the budget or the time to do anything like that. So it's kind of twofold, you know, and then there's other things like, uh, you know, pages of dialogue that that seem to be, you know, just reiterating points that were already made in the scene, you know, or mm-hmm. something that maybe an action will suffice. An action is always better than a word. So if you can achieve and and tell the story via an action versus dialogue, you're always better off, Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion. So, you know, there was, there was quite a few different things that, that were cut out for different reasons. But, uh, but again, it's, you know, it's, I'm not disparaging Scott's script at all. It was a great script. It's just, Mm -hmm. you know, I felt like uh, there was a more refined version of it. So gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So once you had this script intact, you had a version that you guys liked, um, what were those next steps to actually putting this together and getting it greenlit? Uh, I mean, from there, you know, it was, um, casting and, uh, you know, finding the right, you know, alchemy of people. Um, and then from there it was, it was shopping it around and seeing who wanted to finance the thing. And, and Lionsgate was, was super excited about it uh, in America. And then Universal did the rest of the world. And um, here we are. So mm-hmm. yeah. what what sort of cast did you have on board when you got Lionsgate to green light it? Uh, it was it was it was um, Scott. JK Frank. Um, it was those three. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, well, perfect. So um, I really appreciate your coming on to talk about this today. I always like to app, um, wrap up the interviews just to ask the guests, is there anything you've seen recently that you thought was really great? Netflix, Hulu, anything you've been watching recently that a screenwriting audience could get something out of? I mean, I, I feel like I was late to the party with seeing the movie Barbarian. I watched that the other night and, huh. uh, and you know, I didn't love the movie. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. But the thing that impressed me the most was just the script and how it was written was was super unique. And uh, and yeah, I, I I learned from that. So okay. I was that was a little pleasant surprise. It's on HBO Max, uh, and uh, I highly recommend it. Bill Skarsgård is amazing. So okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's a great great recommendation. And how can people see see um, one day as as a lion? What's the release schedule going to be like for this film? Uh, it'll be out next week in theaters. And then from there, it'll be on demand uh, anywhere, anytime. Perfect. Perfect. And what's the best way for people to just keep up with what you're doing? Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, anything you're comfortable sharing, I will put in the show notes so people can click over and follow you. Um, I don't have any social media, but uh, yeah, good for you. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, you know, uh, I, I don't know, I guess just Google or you know. IMDB. Yeah, I'll put your yeah. IMDB oh, page yeah, in there. Yeah. So thank you. So perfect. Well, John, again, I really appreciate you coming on and talking with me again today. Good luck with this film and good luck with all your future films as well. Thank you, Ashley. Good to talk to you again, man. You too. We'll talk to you later. Bye. 
I just want to talk quickly about SYS Select. It's a service for screenwriters to help them sell their screenplays and get writing assignments. The first part of the service is the SYS Select Screenplay Database. Screenwriters upload their screenplays along with a logline, synopsis, and other pertinent information like budget and genre, and then producers search for and hopefully find screenplays they want to produce. Dozens of producers are in the system looking for screenplays right now. There have been a number of success stories come out of the service. You can find out about all the SYS Select successes by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash success. Also on SYS Podcast podcast episode 222, I talk with Steve Deering, who was the first official success story to come out of the SYS Select database. When you join SYS Select, you get access to the screenplay database along with all the other services that we're providing to SYS Select members. These services include the newsletter. This monthly newsletter goes out to a list of over 400 producers who are actively seeking writers and screenplays. Each SYS Select member can pitch one screenplay in this monthly newsletter. We also provide screenwriting leads. We have partnered with one of the premier paid screenwriting leads services so I can syndicate their leads to SYS Select members. There are lots of great paid leads coming in each week from our partner. Recently, we've been getting five to ten high quality paid leads per week. These leads run the gamut. There's producers looking for a specific type of spec script to producers looking to hire a screenwriter to write up one of their ideas or properties. They're looking for shorts, features, TV, and web series pilots, all types of projects. If you sign up for SYS Select, you'll get these leads emailed directly to you several times per week. Also, you get access to the SYS Select forum where we will help you with your logline and query letter and answer any screenwriting related questions that you might have. We also have a number of screenwriting classes that are recorded and available in the SYS Select forum. These classes, these are all the classes that I've done over the years, so you'll have access to those whenever you want once you join. The classes cover every part of writing your screenplay from concept to outlining to the first act, second act, third act, as well as other topics like writing short films and pitching your projects in person. Once again, if this sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, please go to sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. Again, that is sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing John Gaspard, who is a book author and also a screenwriter. He's written a number of fiction books, but has also written two books on filmmaking and screenwriting. One is called Fast, Cheap, and Under Control, specifically for low-budget filmmakers, and the other one is called Fast, Cheap, and Written That Way. This is a book specifically for screenwriters and to help them write screenplays that can be produced on a lower budget. So I think it's a great interview for us here at Selling Your Screenplay since I'm a big proponent of low-budget film film, indie films. Um, so he comes on next week, talks us through his books and kind of some of the the, the trials and tribulations he ha he's had with low budget filmmaking and how his books came together and, and what lessons he's learned for screenwriters. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. That's the show. Thank you for listening.